This year marks the 15th anniversary of the competition where the best athletes are placed on an equal basis to battle it out for title of champion superstars. Over the years, some of the greatest names in sport have put themselves to the challenge. Few have come out on top. This is the Superstars on NBC Sports World. Running back Gary Anderson, a sensational running back pass catcher from the San Diego Chargers, headlines the field. Super fast Vince Coleman of the St. Louis Cardinals returns to Miami. 1986, Coleman again stole 100 bases in a season. Boomer Esiason, the big, strong, left-handed quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals, is here today. Last season, Boomer went to the Pro Bowl, passing for almost 4,000 yards. He is one of the highest-regarded young players in the NFL. High hurdler Greg Foster holds the indoor record in the 60-meter hurdles. Ranked number one in the world, he won silver at the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. 1985 Superstars champion Mark Gaston of the New York Jets is back. Injury sidelined Gaston much of last season. He remained one of the most feared defensive players in the NFL. Willie Gall of the Chicago Bears returns to the Superstars for his third appearance. Gall again led the Bears in receiving last season and is best remembered for his brilliant performance in Super Bowl XX, combining with Jim McMahon in the route of the New England Patriots. When he's out of the water, this bear of a man, Bob Golick of the Cleveland Browns, is one of the best nose tackles in the National Football League. He's been to the last two Pro Bowls. Billy Olsen today is making his second appearance in the Superstars. On 11 occasions, Billy has broken the indoor record in the pole ball. A tremendous force in the National Football League for the Atlanta Falcons is Gerald Riggs. A 1987 Pro Bowl player, he ranked fifth in the NFC in rushing last season, going for over 1,000 yards in three consecutive seasons for Atlanta. Triathlete Scott Tinley completes today's field. One of the world's best-conditioned athletes in the grueling Hawaii Ironman Triathlon, Scott has been the winner of that event in 1982 and 1985. That's today's field of superstars competing for the five final spots in the Superstars Final, all on NBC Sports World. Of South Florida lies Miami, a city noted for its abundance of sunshine and warm weather. Today, we're at the Eden Rock Hotel in nearby Miami Beach, Florida. Hello, everybody. I'm Ahmad Rashad, along with Jimmy Cephalo. And, Jimmy, you know, this competition is a little bit different because before you get down here, it's a lot of fun. Once you get here, it's very serious. That's right. It's because it's the best going against the best, trying to prove who the best athlete available is. You were here. How was your experience in the Superstar? <laughs> I had a wonderful experience. I, I was doing very well until I almost drowned in the swimming pool, and that was the first event. <laughs> and there's a lot more pressure than that, though. What? What's that? Well, going back, because I never competed in this, when you walk back into the locker room to face your teammates after you've competed in the Superstar, Stars, I used to give a lot of grief to people if they nearly drowned in a swimming pool or played basketball and missed the backboard completely. All right, here's a guy who never misses a backboard. Let's go up to Don Cricky. Thank you, Ahmad and Jimmy. Sunny and very breezy in Miami Beach for today's Superstars competition. A series of events that test the complete athlete. To do well here, one must possess speed, strength, and agility. It's not just the big guys that do well. In fact, oftentimes they're upset losers. Five athletes advance in our first show to the finals. Let's meet them again and review how they got there. 49ers running back Roger Craig proved he belonged in the finals with a very strong showing in the weightlifting. Heisman Trophy winner Vinny Testaverde can power a tennis ball as well as a football. He also made the finals. Cardinal reliever Todd Worrell used a lot of muscle in the rowing to place among the finalists. Defensive back Daryl Green of the Redskins won the obstacle course and qualified. And another top spinner for the National Football League, Herschel Walker of the Dallas Cowboys was the top point getter in the first preliminary round. That completes the first five positions for the 10-man final. There are 10 events in the Superstars competition. Each athlete must compete in any seven he chooses. It begins with the swimming and ends with the difficult obstacle course. The winner of each event receives 10 points, second place 7 points, and on down to 1 point for 5th place. And money won today might help buy a boat like that. Each point is worth $100 with a bonus of $10,000 going to the top qualifier. 
Our first event is swimming. Now, let's go to Ahmad Rashad. You're very serious about this competition this year. No, I'm just very cold. <laughs> and it's not funny to be out here in a little dinky swimsuit that uh, barely covers your body. And you're trying to keep covered. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> but listen, you got a guy next to you, a little small guy, Scott Tinley. You got to be worried about him. Well, I'm not worried about him. If he uh, if he wins, well, he wins. But uh, you know, he's a great swimmer. He's a great athlete, and uh, overall, you know, he has a good shot at uh, at really doing good in the Superstars this year. But he, he, as you know, you've got to wait and see what happens. See, Mark, Mark's very serious about this competition. See, I've been with him for three years. This is the most serious he's ever been. Let's go to Jimmy Cephalo. A mind Mark Gastineau might be serious, but serious is wearing the goggles and the hat to go through, Scott. Uh, it looks like you're the odds-on favorite for this race. Well, it's hard to say. You know, 50 yards is so quick and so fast that uh, if you make one little mistake, you, you know, you're out, and the race is won or lost by um, a second or two. So, I, I might have a little, little bit of an advantage because I swam some more th than some of these guys. But um, but does this make you strong? They're, they're real strong. Does it make you feel good though? You got someone like Mark Gaston over there, this big, huge guy, and you're gonna go out there and you're gonna whoop him in this event. I mean, you're the odds on favorite. You've got to be. Well. I don't want to beat him too bad because I know he's going to go out and, uh, and uh, beat me bad for the next nine events. So and it might be uh, dangerous to your health when you get out of the pool. That's right. I got to be careful. <laughs> These guys are a lot bigger than I am. All right. Good luck. The race is two laps of this 25-yard pool. In lane number two is Bob Golick, a former lifeguard in his hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. Mark Gastineau, Scott Tinley, and Boomer Esiason also in the field. That's Golick in the near lane. He gets the death jump off the blocks, takes an early lead, but here comes Mark Gastineau in lane three, moving up quickly to take the lead on this first lap. And surprisingly, it is the two defensive linemen that are out in front. What about uh, Scott Tinley, though? He's the triathlete, and he currently is in last place. He likes to go longer distances. Bob Golick makes the difference in the turn, though, as he regains the lead from Mark Gastineau. And Golick plowing water down the final lap will come to the wall first with Gastineau second and Tinley third as Iason finishes last. And the key to the race was the flip turn for Bob Golick. Down the end of the pool at 25 yards, he executes the flip turn perfectly, gains on Mark Gastineau, and goes on for the win. Big bear of a man, very much at home in the water. Bob Golick gets himself 10 points for winning the swimming competition. And after one event, he is the overall leader and has a new perspective on himself. I felt sleek. I smelled, I felt svelte. I can't spell svelte. But uh, I mean, I mean, it makes you feel like you're moving pretty good. And uh, I mean, it was nicer being in this water than it is out in the air. Stops working on the opposition now as we get set to go to basketball. Here's Ahmad Rashad with the rules. This is a new event in the Superstars competition, and it's called basketball. Now, the rules are you have 60 seconds to score as many points as you can. Here we now, have Ahmad Rashad. Is marked off. This is one point. Ahmad is giving us the basics points, of three points, the game. Three points, it's pointing out the fact that it's segmented into five different areas. One point, two points, three points, four points, and five. Ahmad versus you, sir. Once you make, once you score in one position, one point area, you cannot shoot again from that area. You have to shoot from another area. And Ahmad missed that. He hasn't okay, made one all. Bob, get away, Bob. That was Boomer Esiason, and I'm gonna tackle him. <laughs> I like tackling him. <laughs> Before I was rudely erupted by Bob goes, let me clarify these rules. Now, each of these areas is worth points. Closest to the basket is worth one point. Farthest is worth five points. You must shoot from a different area on each attempt. You also have 60 seconds to score as many points as you can. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to start this group. In the first group, shooting with the number one ball, triathlete Scott Tinley. So we're ready for group one in basketball. There's triathlete Scott Tinley, running back Gerald Riggs of the Atlanta Falcons, and the omnipresent nose tackle from the Cleveland Browns, Bob Golick. We'll see what he can do with a basketball. First thing he tries to do is stuff it down his yet. <laughs> this should be very interesting. I, I don't think Golick's going to be able to play at all. His, his shoulders are too big. 
Well, he might have the touch of a jackhammer. <laughs> Check him out real close now. Scott Tilly with that bad dribble goes in. <laughs> it's very smart move on his part. He goes up and gets a quick one-pointer. Tilly off the side of the glass. Joe Rich is pretty smooth. Joe is getting physical there underneath the basket. <laughs> Just when I say Riggs is pretty smooth, he misses everything. Twice. I don't think, I don't think Scott Tinley spent a lot of time with the basketball. <laughs> now they're Mason laying up bricks. Do they realize that they're supposed to shoot the ball, not throw it at the basket? <laughs> You only get a minute to score all the points you can, and nobody's scoring a whole lot here. <laughs> Could have a shutout. 15 seconds. Down to the final 10 seconds now. Goalie's going to hurt somebody if this isn't over soon. Maybe himself. <laughs> that was an air ball. He missed it all by three feet. He yeah. drew iron. Drew iron there. They're still working on it, and there's the whistle. You know, Don, I saw Jimmy Seppel out here earlier helping Bob Golick with his form, and I think this is what he was showing him. Get underneath the basket, muscle the little guy out of the way, and then <laughs> throw it up near the basket. <laughs> Big dog eats when he gets that inside position, but nobody scores in this group. Bob, you play basketball just like a, like a, a nose tackle. I got to tell you, it was getting dangerous underneath the basket. Well, um, and you were giving me a bad time. Well, no, I mean, you made it, obviously. I made, I made one. I mean, Tinley was crowding me under the boards, and I had to hit him a couple times, check him with an elbow once. Wait a minute, Tinley was crowding you under the boards? He's only two feet shorter than you and 150 pounds lighter. But it's that low center of gravity. You know what I was impressed by? What? Your wife had everything possible right behind you on video camera, taking every shot possible, and she has the cap on. That's what I like. <laughs> That's good. The cap on is Very good. Very good, Bob. Jackie Golick might want to burn that tape. Gerald Riggs had 11 points. Scott Tinley, 10. Golick had only eight. Now we're ready for our second group in basketball. In this group with the number one ball. One ten. Here is hurdler Greg Foster. He'll be shooting with the number one ball. Vince Coleman of the Cardinals looks good warming up. We'll see if he can shoot it. He's got the number two ball. Not bad, Vince. And number three in the group is ball. Willie Gauld of the Chicago Bears. Bears. We know he can get to the basket in a hurry. We'll see if he can get it in. Don, I have a feeling that this is not Willie's strong point, but the guy who could be the real basketball player is Greg Foster. He spends a lot of time at Poly Pavilion out there at UCLA playing with the big boys. Got some guys having trouble underneath. <laughs> Willie Gauld three times yeah, in the one-point area. <laughs> Foster... Looking real sharp here. Nice soft touch. Bank one, then hit straight away. Well, in the warm up, I saw him stand in the basket and just dunk two handed. Here's Vince Coleman. Gets the roll. Oh. 30 seconds. Willie's spending a lot of time there on the uh, one point area. Rick start coming up from the outside, and now they get oh. down low where most of the points have come with many of the shooters. One minute. You've got to pile up all the points you can. You can score anywhere from one to five, depending on how far you are from the basket. Foster pumping up the four-pointer. Coleman, has he made a shot yet? I haven't seen a ball go in. Willie's having some serious problems underneath. <laughs> now, here's Greg Foster. He may be the best basketball player of the entire group. Here's a nice little 25-foot jump shot. Easy does it. You had a little different strategy. You went long distance right off the bat. Well, my shooting's pretty good. I play basketball every once in a while, so I figured I can get out there and try to but, try that one first. But I kept waiting for you to go up and dunk it. I mean, you are a hurdler. What happened to that? Well, if they give us extra points, I'd have dunked it, but the extra points, no doubt. All right, congratulations. <laughs> good job. But Greg did manage to pump in 17 points during his 60 seconds on the court. He ends up the winner in basketball and gets 10 points for it with Coleman second, Briggs and Golf tied for third. Next is weightlifting. The all-pro linemen are usually the favorites here. Mark Gastineau is the record holder in superstars weightlifting. But Mark Gastineau knows it's not just brute force that wins this event. He was upset last year by a 176-pound wide receiver, Mark Clayton. And today, Mark Gastineau is coming back with a vengeance, he says. Now let's go to the competition. The bar is at 240 pounds for our third event, weightlifting. Here's Gerald Riggs of the Atlanta Falcons, ready to put it up if he can, and I think he can, Jimmy. 
I think so too, but remember the bar is set with more weight than Gerald Riggs weighs. Again, good leg action though, and he gets it up easily. So Gerald Riggs passes the test of 240 pounds, and now comes that bear of a man from the Cleveland Browns. People have been throwing peanuts to him. <laughs> Big Bob Golick. Golick has got the size and strength to be able to lift 240 pounds. Take a look at the size of his legs. He's built like a typical nose tackle. Short, squat, wide in the middle. He shouldn't have any trouble at all. A tremendous athlete, really. He was an All-American in two sports at Notre Dame, football and wrestling. Came out of Notre Dame, drafted in the second round by New England as a linebacker. They didn't think he had it to back the line. They waived him. He went back to his hometown of Cleveland and has now has been a Pro Bowl nose tackle the last two seasons for the Browns. Now Golick puts up 240 pounds with no problem. I meet him at 280. And now here comes the man who holds the weightlifting record in past superstars, Mark Gastineau. And he's styling. He's got the sunglasses on, the color-coordinated sweatsuit, the brace on the left knee. <laughs> and he's got it up. Jimmy, it looked like that left knee might have bothered him a little bit. I think part of it is a psychological ploy, though. He did have a knee problem late in the year. He says he's healthy, but he knows that uh, Bob Golick is overlooking at him and saying, gee, poor Mark's got the brace on the knee. Maybe I should go light on him. Yes, you know, of course, at 270, he's a lot heavier than the bar weight right now, but Greg Foster, who's stepping up to it, only weighs about 165 pounds, looking to put 240 pounds up. He's a terrific athlete, but this is a real test for this hurdler. And it proves to be too much for him, so the man who won silver in the hurdles at the Olympic Games in 84 goes out. Greg Foster out at 240. Leg strength is so important for a hurdler, and he obviously he has a great deal of it, but does not have the technique to get the bar up at 240. Woo, 20 pounds, <laughs> Greg Foster, none the worse for it, is now stepping to the bar as the big quarterback from the Cincinnati Bengals, Boomer Esiason, the 6'4", 225 pounds, and he can't get up 240. I got it up hard. What can I say? <laughs> we got half a point for that, right? We got half a point apiece. That's what we got, man. You know, Jimmy, there might be bigger athletes. There surely are, and faster athletes. But there isn't a better athlete in the National Football League than Gary Anderson, who's stepping up next. Well, he can do just about everything. Run the 100-yard dash. I'm sure he'll do well in that event. Let's see how strong he is. He's only about 180 or 185, and... His wife, Ollie, cheers on Gary Anderson as he puts up 240 pounds, about 55 pounds over his body weight. While the bar is set at 260 pounds in weightlifting, let's check in with Ahmad Rashad for a report on tennis. Thanks, Don. Now, this is not center court at Wimbledon, but it is our third event final, tennis. Now, Bears wide receiver Willie Galt was matched against triathlete Scott Tinley. After a first-round bye, Tinley defeated the Falcons' Gerald Riggs in the semifinal by a score of 6-3. Then Willie Galt had to beat Boomer Esiason and Billy Olsen for the right to play Tinley. He beat both these guys with an identical score of 6-3. Now, Willie had an unusual strategy. It's called the patty cake strategy. He just got up to the net and pushed the ball back and let the other guy make all the mistakes. One thing that Willie Galt did do very well during the course of this match is return of serve. He hit everything that Tinley hit at him right back just as hard. Now, at match point, Willie Galt did something different. He charged the net, and he just hit a couple of those little patty cake shots and hoped that Tinley would hit it in the net. And on his second volley, I guess you can call it a volley, Tinley hits it right in the net, and Galt goes on to win the tennis and picks up 10 points. So here are the results of the tennis. And now our standings after three events. Willie Galt leads it with 13 points, followed by Scott Tinley, Bob Golick, Greg Foster, and Vince Colton. Back at Miami Beach, the bar is set at 260 pounds in weightlifting. Gerald Riggs just missed at 260. Now big Bob Golick from the Browns is ready to try that weight. And 260 is easy money for Big Robert, who's cheered on by his wife, Jackie. And then she took the lens cap off this time. She's got it all set to go. Look at Bob. He plays to a crowd very well. As good as, well, no, not as good as... <laughs> <laughs> no one plays to a crowd as good as Mark Gastineau. 
you know, he's been wearing that knee brace because of the surgery he had on his knee last year. And I think that may play a toll because when you lift this weight, I think it puts a lot of pressure on your knees. Yeah, and he also had the abdominal pull, which is a difficult injury, and that'll affect the weightlifting, but he has no trouble with 260. What is Golik doing? He's looking good. He's trying, he's trying to work the crowd. He's taking uh, some instruction from Mark Gastineau. Now, this is pretty remarkable. Gary Anderson, 185 pounds, almost getting up 260. He goes out of that weight. Our left of the competition, Bob Golik and Mark Gastineau. Now you've got all the lightweights out of the competition. They can start moving the bar up. It starts at 280, Bob. Yeah, they, they came up and said, you want to move up 300, 310? Me and Mark going, be a stupid. You know, <laughs> let's do this the regular way. All right, Mark, you're the record holder of this thing, 327 and a half pounds. You think you'll get past that today? I doubt it. I, uh, if I got up that far, he'd still probably be in it, too. So the one that probably get the record in this is because he is a lot stronger. He's a lot better athlete. He's probably Bob. Oh, the psych is already starting now. Jeez, I mean, how much do you want for that? I mean, geez, you want money or do you want, like, material? My payoff check that you took away from me. <laughs> oh, we're, now we're getting into the real stuff. We're, okay. see? <laughs> but let me out of here. You can fight about it. Let me step over there. Bar up to 280 now, and here comes big Bob Golick ready to try it with wife Jackie putting it all on tape. Meanwhile, Mark Gastineau standing by. Bad knee and all. Mark gets the sunglasses award today. <laughs> That's so you can't see any worry in his eyes. Golk has gotten serious. Whoa. Didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie's obsessed. She's got the cap back on, doesn't she? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> right down in the dirt, old Bob Golick. It's a pin. <laughs> That knee got well all of a sudden, didn't it? Here's Mark Gastineau at 280 pounds for the win in weightlifting. And he gets it. And he also gets 10 points for winning the weightlifting competition. Golik gets seven for second. And now after four events, Gastineau and Golik are tied for the overall point lead with 17 apiece. Now the competition moves to Miami Marine Stadium. Next, we come to the rowing competition. It would seem to be easy enough. Row hard and get there as fast as you can. But actually, it is one of the most difficult undertakings in the Superstars competition. It is more than just a strength event. Coordination is extremely important. One arm overpowers the other, and quickly a boat can go off course and out of the race. Additionally, we have choppy seas and heavy winds today, so it's going to be all the more difficult. The top three finishers go to the finals. Now let's go to the action. In the far lane is Willie Gold, who's had problems in the boat in the last couple of years, but he's been practicing. In the center lane is Bob Golick. A lot of upper body power. And then there's Greg Foster, who is a great hurdler and a fair oarsman. <laughs> we'll find out who's the best in a second. Much more difficult than you might think if you haven't tried this one. It's so easy, as you pointed out, Ahmad, to go off course. And Willie Gull, heading right down the middle, takes the early lead. Greg Foster, an excellent all-around athlete. Good coordination, both oars in the water. And Foster moving up on golf now in the near lane. As Big Bob Golick doing his best, but he's dropped to third. You know, Golick has a lot of weight to contend with in that boat, Don. He does. Greg Foster putting that main face on as he goes... <laughs> Down the near lane, and Greg Foster doing very nicely moves ahead as Golick has dropped to third. Willie Gall running second in the far lane, and it is Greg Foster, a decisive winner in this heat of rowing. Willie Gall cruising in second, and Bob Golick gaining on the finish line. Golick, a typical nose tackle, only one oar in the water. Here's Jimmy with the winner. Greg, two years ago, you couldn't even finish this race. It looks like you improved your technique. I've improved a great deal. I just try to keep it straight and try to keep the strokes about the same, and uh, worked out pretty well. One more time, it was the smaller man against a much, much larger uh, Bob Golick, and you come uh, across a hand. Well, I think in the water, they're trying to trying to uh, use a little bit too much power, I think. I'm just trying to use these, these long, uh, shallow strokes and uh, try to keep them even. All right, congratulations on simply fi finishing the race in first place as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much. 
Rowing competition is still ahead from Miami Marine Stadium, but now let's go for a report on our fifth event to Jimmy Cephalo. We now move on to the bowling competition here at Classic Lanes in Miami, Florida. All 10 contestants have entered the competition, and the rules are actually very easy. Each contestant will bowl one complete game with the top five finishers moving on to a bowl-off, which will consist of just three frames, the eighth, ninth, and tenth frames. Why have all 10 contestants entered? Well, they all claim to have some bowling experience with one ringer in the crowd, Bob Golick, who belongs to a bowling league in the city of Cleveland. Now let's move on to the action. In the qualifying match, Willie Galt's 216 made him the number one seed, making the three-frame bowl-off with Willie with Greg Foster, Boomer Esiason, Bob Golick, and Billy Olson. In the first match, we'll pit Greg Foster versus Boomer Esiason. Foster let it be known early that he was going to win the bowling. He rolled a 48 in his first match with Boomer Esiason. Despite Boomer's earlier prediction, he never could string together enough strikes to win. The strong southpaw had the form and the wild pin action with this strike, but it was Foster beating a size in 48 to 35 to move on to the next confrontation. In match two, it was Greg Foster versus Bob Golick. And at this point, I just had to find out the mystery of Bob Golick. Was he a professional bowler in disguise? Bowling Bob Golick, or are you really a ringer and do you really belong to a bowling lead in the city of Cleveland? Well, I, uh, I've been bowling for a while. I spent some time in Europe. Not bowling, just I was in Europe. Um, Should you be eliminated from this competition no, because no. you're... No, no, no. I, I joined a league one time maybe about five years ago. Uh, it was just a church league. Um, I got there because I got in there because they had an empty space and when I left they still had an empty space and when I got there They still felt they had an empty space. So I'm not a ringer. I just go out there and I have fun and eat french fried mushrooms <laughs> I'm not sure what mushrooms have to do with bowling But moving right along Greg Foster continued to bowl well and just about everything worked for him His ball consistently made the pocket and he finished with a three-frame score of 49 in his match with Bob Golick Mushrooms and bowling leagues aside, Bob Golick rolled well enough to win in most matches, but when he needed a strike against Foster, he just didn't get it. Greg Foster beat Bob Golick 49 to 39, and that was Billy Olson next up. Olson's qualifying score of 158 made him a slight favorite in match three. For the pole vaulter, the approach was the same, but the delivery quite different. And he put his final ball into the pocket for a strike and a score of 36. Nevertheless, he realized that this competition was all over for him. Every time we looked around, Greg Foster was rolling strikes. And he took them any way he could get them. Foster rolled a brilliant three-frame score of 55 to Olsen's 36, set up a final duel with the favorite, Willie Gold, who had been waiting in the wings with a fine 216 qualifying game. Both men were not on form in the final. In the last frame, Foster needed to strike badly. But he just couldn't get it. He did pick up the spare to finish with a 37. Then it was Willie Gold's turn in the final frame. He needed a spare for the win. But he hooked his final ball far to the left and missed his chance for the victory. Greg Foster had defeated Willie Gold 37 to 33 for a win in the bowling competition. That gave Foster 10 points in the bowling. Galt was second with seven, followed by Olsen, Golick, and Esiason. Our standings after five events finds Greg Foster with 20 and a half points in first place. Galt is second with 20 points. Golick, Gastineau, and Tinley follow the rest of the field. Thank you, Jimmy. We're ready now for our final rowing heat. Mark Gastineau will row against Billy Olsen. Remember, the three fastest times qualify. The two top times so far belong to Greg Foster and Willie Galt. I think that's going to change right here in this race, John, because Gastineau, if you talk about powering a boat through this course, his boat almost comes up out of the water with its strong, powerful strokes. But once he gets it straight here... He's got his course righted now, and Billy Olsen hanging tough against one of the best rowers they've ever had in the Superstars competition, Big Mark Gastineau. That precision there, it, it's just like a just like a machine there. This would be a major upset if Billy Olsen can beat Gastineau. Sort of the Michael Jordan tongue out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Billy made his challenge, but Gastineau now has it all together as he starts down the stretch, ready to row to yet another victory. And Mark Gastineau takes this heat. Billy Olsen rowing well. 
<laughs> what a difference in these two body types, David and Goliath. And Goliath, in this case, Mark Gastineau, gets into the finals along with Willie Galt and Greg Foster. Coming up, more Superstars competition. Ready now for the final of the sixth event. Rowing in the far lane is Willie Gold. In the center lane, the favorite, Mark Gastineau. In the near lane, Greg Foster. Willie Galt and Foster have their work cut out for him because a lot of people talk about how strong Gastineau is in the weightlifting, but I think this is his best event. He didn't waste any time. Big Mark Gastineau dropping those oars and pulling hard and moving out to a substantial lead now. As Foster gets himself back on track, Willie Galt has fallen off the pace. And Mark Gastineau is going to take it home an easy winner. Now Galt starting to pick up on Foster. It could be close for second. But Foster pulls away as they come near the line. It'll be Mark Gastineau, Greg Foster, and Willie Galt in the finals of rowing. Well, Willie said he was going for third, and that's exactly what he got. Tough to take fourth in a three-man race. <laughs> now, Greg Foster had a little bit of a problem trying to keep his boat straight down the lane. As you can see here, one of the oars comes up out of the water. He gets turned a little bit crooked, but he was able to recover and take second place. For 38 and a half seconds, Gastineau used every ounce of muscle and strength he has to win the heat. Here's Jimmy with him. I think you sandbagged it during the preliminary. You motored past the other two guys in the final. Well, they uh, kind of got messed up on their strokes, and uh, I knew I wasn't going to break any records, so I was just trying to conserve energy. The intimidation on the dock before? A little bit. A little bit it helped out. <laughs> Wait, you're supposed to be a physical wreck. I mean, you got the knee injury, and you have an abdominal muscle that's been bothering you all season long. You come out here, and you beat everybody. Well, everything is healed. It takes time to heal, and I haven't been getting it banged around like I do in the season, so. The rest and, and the, the offseason really helped me already. Okay, second place overall. Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks. Appreciate it. Greg Foster with his second place finish in rowing and the seven points that went with it has now moved to the top of the leaderboard after six events. One half point up on Gastineau. Willie Galt is third with 24 points. Coming up, the bike racing here at Key Biscayne. Sometimes you get the idea that Bob Golick is competing in the superstars for one reason, for home movies. Everywhere you go, you see Bob's wife, Jackie, recording for posterity. Earlier this year, Jackie followed Bob and the super teams from Hawaii. When Bob won, Jackie was there. When Bob fell, Jackie also had her eye to the camera. Since high school in Cleveland, they've been inseparable. From Bob's career moves, first with the New England Patriots and now with the Cleveland Browns, Bob and Jackie we'll Golick have walked together. Better. From their new home in the Cleveland suburb of Mentor, they can look back now on their courtship and smile. Darth Vader. And win or lose, the superstars will provide a lot more memories the Golicks can share. We had met about nine years before we got married at a pool. I was a lifeguard, and she was the cashier at the pool. And no, I didn't save her life, and she was forever indebted or anything like that. <laughs> But uh, that would have been a good scenario. That would have been good. Yeah, we could have lied to everybody and nobody would have known the difference. But uh, anyway, that's that's how it started. Um, for nine years, through my the rest of high school, my college years, and my years at, at New England, um, we dated off and on, majority of the time on. A couple mm -hmm. times you were mad at me and it was off. Just a few. And uh, then right before I was going to my fourth training camp at New England, I stopped over to say goodbye and I figured, well, I got to do it now or I'm never going to see her again. And uh, so I asked her to, to marry me. And she said, well, why don't you come in the house and tell my mother that? I said, oh, pff, no problem. So I walked in the house and I, I went up to her. I said, Mrs. Benline, uh, I asked, just asked your daughter to marry me. And she looked up at me and she said, uh, I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> so. When we were engaged, I think he weighed around uh, 235 and he looked really good. But obviously to, to survive at his position, he cannot weigh 235. So. That's probably it. I, just to go out and buy normal clothes for a change would be really nice. Okay, so, so now this is, now the truth comes out now, right? I mean, you had to do this here like on, on television, right? I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I mean, the, it's, it's, it's tough buying all your clothes out of the, the Jacques Penet big and tall man catalog. <laughs> Omar the tent maker, really. <laughs> you know. Bob Gilnick realizes a pro career is only a visit, and he looks forward to a life after football. There's so, it's such a physical game that I'm looking forward to using my, my mind again. You know, finding a job where I actually have to uh, 
do a lot of thinking and where perhaps the majority of my job, if, if not all my job, relies, relies on my intelligence. And for me, stepping away from football and getting into the real world is going to be like the big, oh, big challenge. challenge. <laughs> I hope you can support me for a while. Okay. <laughs> There the goal looks right at the start line. Jackie might do better than Big Robert on that bike. <laughs> I'm sure the bike would appreciate it. <laughs> now let's meet the contestants. In lane one is the overall point leader, the hurdler, Greg Foster. Greg's awful serious. Time to get down to business. There's a guy that can really fly on a bike or off. Vince Coleman of the St. Louis Cardinals. Big Mark Gastineau is set to go in lane three. Mark Gastineau. Four. In lane four, Cincinnati quarterback Boomer Siason looking good. And there he is in lane five, Captain America himself, the easy rider Bob Golick. I hope this bike can withstand Golick's weight all the way around this track two times. They start out chugging, then pick up speed. Twice around the quarter-mile track here at Cramden Park. See, guys, I told these guys before the race that the red bikes were the fast bikes. Immediately, you see Gaston and Golick that are in last place. Well, they're almost in last place, and they got blue bikes. They have something to do with the guy pedaling, too. A little bit. But look who's in first. Greg Foster. What color is his bike? Red. Red bike. Right now, Greg Foster holding the lead with Vince Coleman running number two. Mark Gastineau is in third place. Twice around the oval. This completes the first lap. Bob Golick bringing up the rear as they head into the final lap. Still in the lead. He might go wire to wire. The hurdler, Greg Foster. Golick's pumping awful hard, but he's just not going very fast. Vince Coleman holding position, doing some drafting down that back straight, Jimmy. He might be ready to put on a kick down the final turn. If he's going to do it, he's got to do it now. They're ready to go into the final straight. But this isn't like trying to steal second base. I don't think Coleman's going to be able to catch Foster down the straightaway. Greg Foster goes the distance and wins the bike racing. Number two finisher Vince Coleman, Mark Gastineau, three Boomer Esiason, geared up like a highway patrolman with those shades, finishes fourth. Bob Golick picks up one point for fifth place, and after seven events, Greg Foster is still our leader. We'll be back with more of the Superstars competition right after this. In the field, Greg Foster, Vince Coleman, Gary Anderson, Willie Gould, and Billy Olson. Twice around this quarter-mile track at Crandon Park. Tinley is used to running much longer distances, and if he's going to win this event, he's got to get a big lead up front because the sprinters will be trying to catch him down the final stretch. Vince Coleman setting an easy pace and moving out into the first turn as the leader. Tinley right on his shoulder. Tinley, as we pointed out, a triathlete, a tremendously well-conditioned athlete for long-distance runs. He could put on a kick and really sprint this out if he wanted to. Willie Galt's in good position. All week long, he's been asked by reporters here about Mike Ditka, the coach of the Chicago Bears, and Ditka's future. I definitely think he will be back. Uh, I think uh, when, when you lose a close friend like he did, it's an emotional time. Of course, players go through it every day or every season because they lose players who are close to him. But I think he sat down and reevaluating where he was, and he has another year in his contract. I, I think he definitely will be back next year. And the year after that, I'm not sure really what he'll do. Scott Tilly starting to stretch it out a little bit now. Big easy stride, and he has a substantial lead as they conclude the first lap of this two-lap race in the half-mile run. Vince Coleman running second. Willie Gull, a world-class spinner, running third. Now we have Gary Anderson moving up into fourth position. Billy Olson and Greg Foster having some problems struggling a bit in back. Now, this is when it gets very difficult for people who are not used to running a half-mile distance. The first lap is, is fine. It's an easy stride. But now it starts to get very difficult, and you see the experience of Scott Tilly paying off as he pulls away from the rest of the field. <laughs> sort of funny to watch the style of these guys on the second lap. All of a sudden, they start running like they're sitting on a chair. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Tilly's starting to look like Secretariat at the Belmont. He's got a big lead, and it's over. They're really competing for second place now. They're not going to catch Tinley. Although Willie Galt has got some kick. Come on, 
He'd have to have some kick in order to catch you. Billy Olsen has some kick, too. He's cashed in his beach tickets. And he's... Here comes Tinley down the final straight to win the half-mile run. Perhaps the world's best triathlete proves himself to be best in the half-mile today at the Superstars. Vince Coleman of the Cardinals bringing up the rear is first on the base pass, but he was only fifth in the half mile. Here's a mod with him. Mr. Rig, I told you about he jumped on you. Huh? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he was right. You know, you always, you're talking about the red bike. Remember? He jumped. It was, it was a hell of a first lap. It was a hell of a lap. Hell of a first lap. We should have ended there. Where's Scott? Scott. I'm telling you, you got to stop. It's only a two lap race, but you really poured it on. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm used to going out and running 10, 12 miles a day, so this is, um, it's fast for me, and it's quick, and I think that, uh, it's probably pretty fortunate enough to win today. The man is not sweating. He's not breathing <laughs> hard or anything. I can't believe this. I'm going in a minute, though. <laughs> but I'm going to go to the obstacle course and see that wall I'll be sweating big time. Hey, you know, it was really nice to see you run all those guys right in the ground. I know, next time I watch him on TV, I go, I beat that guy <laughs> by about 100 yards, too. Congratulations, man. Thanks. He sure did win big, and he gets 10 points to Scott Tinley for winning the half-mile run. Have I got an ambulance? <laughs> Thank God, I'm a hurdler. Got beat by a guy who runs hey. 27 miles a day, and this is just a warm-up for him. <laughs> and Scott Tinley with the 10 points moves up on the leaderboard, but Foster's still on top with 39 and a half points. Gastineau and Galt tied for second. Coming up, the 100-yard dash. Back at sunny Crandon Park, Key Biscayne, Florida. Now we come to the ninth event, the 100-yard dash, and featured in the field is the record holder in the 100-yard dash and superstars competition, Willie Gall of the Chicago Bears. Also in the field, the great base stealer from the St. Louis Cardinals, Vince Coleman. Let's meet the entire field. <laughs> Billy, a lot of people don't realize how much speed it takes to be a good pole vaulter. How much speed do you have? Well, I don't know. I, I'm kind of worried right now that I may not have enough to, to keep up with these guys, but we'll find out here pretty soon. <laughs> How far is that runway in the pole vault? That's about 145 feet, something like that. You yeah. got a long way longer to go here? I'm, I'm, I got about three runways in there, and I'm, you know, used to one vault at a time, so I'm a little out of here. We'll All right, see. good luck, good luck. Well, it's a serious competition, and I'll tell you, you've got some people on the long side of you that can run a long way and fast. Well, you're right. Well, I, I got a lot of guys over here. I think the key for me is just to run and relax and stay relaxed. And if I can do that without tensing up, I should be okay. But, you know, it's going to be an intense competition. All right, record holder, 935, it's all-time record. You going after that today? No, I'm not going after the record. I'm just trying to prevail in here and try to finish second behind Galt. <laughs> yeah, Willie well, just said, uh-huh, sure. All right, now down here we have Gary, Gary Anderson. You've got a couple of speed burners on your left side. Can it affect you today? Well, no, I'm just going to try to hang in and do the best I can. I hope I come in one or two places. Oh, first or second. All right, we're going for first. either one. You take it. I take anything. All right, and Gerald Riggs down here, the running back, the fullback type guy here. I know you uh, you're ready to run against all the speed burners here. I'm ready to find out what I have. I tell you what, I got some jackrabbits in here, and I'm I'm just gonna have fun. And uh, if I'm I'm looking for the finish, um, one, two, three. Oh, no, finish finishes that way, right? <laughs> in front of me. That's all. All right. Good luck. Now we're ready for the 100-yard dash, and there's some world-class speed entered. Leading the way, Willie Galt. Also in the field, Gary Anderson, Vince Coleman, Billy Olson, and Gerald Riggs. Galt is the man to watch, and he is positioned in lane two. Willie Galt striding out smartly. Gary Anderson putting on a good kick, though, and Gary Anderson a fly him at Galt with that upright stride, takes it to the line, and Gary Anderson second. Olsen running well, may have finished third. Vince Coleman was also very close to a third-place finish as we watch again on the tape replay. Willie Galt using very little effort. His head never moves whatsoever as he crosses the finish line. All right, Willie, you look pretty smooth. It looked like we were kind of just uh, trying to just run straight through it. Well, it was a little delayed, but... Uh, I just wanted to stay smooth, stay comfortable, and work on technique. But I felt really slow. I think it's because I've done so much here today. Yeah, that takes a toll on you after doing all these events. Mr. Roy, yeah. Mr. Riggs sitting in on everything. He don't care what it is. He tries to sit in on everything, so he just today. All right, going into the obstacle course, and I did this last year. You're our new leader. <laughs> Go ahead. 
<laughs> but that's right, Ahmad. Willie Galt with 10 points for winning the 100-yard dash in 9.43 seconds does go to the top of the leaderboard with 41 points. Greg Foster now second, followed by Gastineau, Tinley, and Golick. Coming up next, the final event, the obstacle course. Back at Key Biscayne, we still have two athletes to qualify for the Superstar Finals. Ready now for the 10th and final event of today's Superstars competition, the obstacle course, the most difficult event. It's a test of speed, strength, and agility. Three athletes have already qualified for the finals. The battle here is among five athletes for the final two spots. For more, let's go to Ahmad and Jimmy. All right, thanks, Don. I'd have to say that uh, Gary Anderson, he's a guy that's really impressed me throughout this competition, and he should do well in the, in the obstacle course. He should, and let's not forget Vince Coleman, and he won this event last year, uh, the obstacle course, that is, was second overall, yet is in danger of not making to the final. It'll be interesting to see how he does this afternoon. All right, so for the people out there, why don't we demonstrate? Now, what we'll do is we'll describe the course for you. Most of the athletes will use this rope to scale a 12-foot wall. Mon, did you use it when you were here? Nope, brought a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> then it's on through the tunnel and onto the blocking sled. And then they'll show their quick feet by trying to run through the tires. Then, Jimmy, they will pick up speed and fly over the water jump. And then try and fly again over the high jump. And then they will negotiate the last two hurdles and glide through the finish line. Ready now for our first heat of the obstacle course. There is Scott Tinley, the world-class triathlete, and Greg Foster, the silver medal winner at the 84 Olympic Games in the hurdle. And he's got a big hurdle to negotiate. The toughest obstacle is the first one, the 12-foot wall. <laughs> Tinley's approach was bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's looking for steps. <laughs> he's a go-getter, though. He's going to use a mod's approach. Where is that ladder? Greg Foster leisurely goes through the tires and now up to the high bar. Penalty there as he comes to the two hurdles and onto the finish line. Scott Tinley is somewhere back up the course doing his best. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Scott says, the optical course is not my job. This is where Greg Foster got into trouble. He clears the water jump very easily. Then he tries to get fancy and tries to completely hurdle the high jump bar, but just kicks the bar with his right foot. Quarterback Boomer Esiason will run unopposed in the second heat of the obstacle course. He was also a fine baseball player and has fond memories of a great award. The best memories I've ever had was uh, when uh, I was in uh, high school in New York and I won the Carl Yastrzemski Award. Here I am watching Carl Yastrzemski from Long Island, and kind of like a boyhood hero, and I won his award as the outstanding baseball player on Long Island. And uh, What'd you play? I was a pitcher, and uh, I was 15-0 and 0 my senior year, and I thought I was going to go play baseball somewhere. How I ended up in football, I still never know, but uh, it was something that was, you know, one of the biggest thrills of my life to win one of my heroes, one of my idols when I was a kid's award, an na award named after him. Boomer Esiason ready to try the obstacle course, running unopposed in the heat. I think that wall will be opposition enough. All right. Yeah, he got over it pretty easily. He's big, 6'4", 225 pounds. Now, he's never hit a blocking sled in his life. I don't think they let quarterbacks do that. <laughs> he's never run through the tires before either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And we're starting to come apart now. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, listen, Sam uh, would have been worried if he sees the way you went over that high jump, boy. You must have killed yourself. I don't care. I got over the wall. <laughs> Really. You know, everybody's happy if they just get over the wall. That's what it is. That's the whole thing. It's not because I've been watching that since I was a kid. And I said, I'm going to make it over the wall. I don't care what anything else happens. You know what, Boomer? Right. I'm glad you don't throw like that. <laughs> Me too. And I'm glad I'm a football player, not an obstacle course athlete. All right. Congratulations. Boomer is sizing. The obstacle course behind him goes back to regroup. We'll have more of the final event in a moment. Back in sunny South Florida on Key Biscayne, the competition in the obstacle course continues as two 
world-class track and field athletes are ready to run. Here's Willie Galton, Billy Olsen matched against him, a man who set 11 records in the high jump during his career. Olsen shouldn't have too much trouble getting up this wall. He's used to climbing oh, high walls. That's impressive. It yeah, but I think he's in trouble the rest of the way against Willie. <laughs> that's right. Willie's a good obstacle course runner, and he knows those tires from his football training. So he gets that big burst of speed here. Now watch him go out. He, he decided to go for the leap instead of trying to hurdle the high jump bar. Nicely done, though, by Willie Gold. A fault free run for Willie, but Billy Olsen may have had a problem, Jimmy. Yeah, it came back at the water jump. Apparently, Billy Olsen's right foot just happens to go over the front part of the line. Take a look. His right foot, when it hits the green part of the jump, will go slightly into the water. He'll be penalized for that. Billy Galt negotiates the course in 24 and a half seconds, the best time so far. Remember, the two fastest times in the trial heats advanced to the obstacle course final. Definite contender to get there is Gary Anderson, the great back from San Diego, and Vince Coleman, an equally fast and superb all-around athlete from the Cardinals, is matched against him in this heat. Both of them up to the wall and over very quickly. Watch the quickness of Gary Anderson's speed as you see Vince Coleman stop for a while in the blocking set. See the quick feet he has. That's his football training. A definite edge there. It's amazing. They came over the old wall equal. They came out of the tunnel equal. And all of a sudden, Gary Anderson moved out. And Gary Anderson with a very impressive showing in the obstacle course heat. Vince Coleman finishing behind him. Anderson with the best time of 23 and a half seconds. That means he'll advance to the final of the obstacle course against Willie Galt. What a matchup. Big Bob Golick knows better than to try the obstacle course. He does have an interesting suggestion, though, about a possible future superstar event. I think, like, one of the events should be bocce ball. <laughs> a really good all-around game. I, I think That's that would a, be... Yeah, he's good at that. You're tough, babe. Back now for the finals of the obstacle course, and it's a very important event, particularly for Gary Anderson. He needs to win this to beat Willie Galt in order to pass Vince Coleman and make it to the finals of the Superstars as the fifth qualifier. Here's Ahmad. All right, in the race we have coming up now, we have Mr. Galt and Mr. Anderson, and over here we have Mrs. Galt and Mrs. Anderson. Now, they've been cheering for them, their husbands the entire day. Uh, how do you feel now? Still nervous. <laughs> Yeah, but who's going to win this? Well, it's kind of hard to say that. I think both of them are real great athletes, and I'm sure Gary's feeling the pressure because he needs a 10, so it's kind of hard. It's real hard, Denise? yeah. I think it's going to be pretty tough. See, not only do the athletes hedge, but so do the wives. <laughs> and now we come to the finals of the obstacle course. Mark. Willie got to the left, Gary Anderson to the right, both over the wall in style. These two athletes are two of the finest athletes in the world. It's just a beauty to watch them run this obstacle course. Boy, they are some. <laughs> it is a very, very difficult athletic undertaking. Look at Galt just stride over it, take the hurdles, go to the wire. Watching Willie Galt in slow motion replay, we see his extraordinary athletic ability as he strides over the high bar. And the timer tells us he just broke his own superstar's record for the obstacle course, 21.37 seconds his time here. He's with him out now. A little bit better than last time. As a matter of fact, it was a lot better than last time. He set a new superstar's record. Well, I think it was worth it. I'm on. I got a little gatches on my hand to tell me that I've been in, in battle. Uh, I did it without the help of Mark Clayton this time. Of course, we broke the record ourselves two years ago. I'm very pleased with it. I ran basically with Gary, who gave me a great job to going over the wall and through the, the tires. And, I just wanted to go out and run real good. I didn't know that he needed to win to stay in the competition. If not, it, I would have lost. It seemed to me that the key was when you got to the high jump bar, that's when you start picking up speed. You hurdle the bar this time right. rather than just try to jump over it. The first time, I was really too careful, I think. This time, I just said, forget it. I got seven points. I'm just going to go for it. And I just took two strides after the water jump, and I said, I'm going to hurdle the bar regardless. If I knock it out, I don't care. All right, congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank God. Thank you, Ahmad and Willie. It really was a great job. Ten points for winning the obstacle course. And here are the qualifiers now for the finals, led by Willie Galt today. Greg Foster, Gastineau, Tinley, and Coleman also go to the finals. 
A superstar effort by some other athletes who didn't make the cut. And so after today's competition at the Superstars, the final five finalists have been decided. And they are Willie Galt, Greg Foster, Mark Gastineau, Scott Tinley, and Vince Coleman of the St. Louis Cardinals. Interesting, Ahmad and Jimmy, that a guy doesn't have a million-dollar contract. Scott Tinley got in to make some money. That was interesting. But, you know, the two guys that really impressed me were Greg Foster and Willie Galt because uh, Greg Foster seemed to be a veteran. He'd know when to turn it on, when to save something for another event. And Willie Galt has impressed me the last three years. And he keeps telling me not to pick him. But I think going into the finals, he's got to be my favorite. Uh, he is a favorite right now, but I agree with you. Now, what about Scott Tinley? Look at this guy. Someone who doesn't receive maybe the publicity the other athletes who are here uh, get from day to day, but he showed he's a great athlete, a triathlete, and uh, I think he may be another surprise when we get to the finals. This is Don Crickey at the Superstars in Key Biscayne, Florida. Join us next Sunday for the Superstars final. Now let's go to our studio in New York. Yeah.